Hi, congratulations on your new RV. We're really excited for you. Please make sure before you're signing that you bring the following items with you. If you are a cash buyer, please make sure that you bring a cashier's check, no personal checks at time of signing, or you may bring actual cash. If you're a finance customer, please make sure that you bring proof of insurance listing your specific lien holder. If you need that information, please call us ahead of time. Also, make sure that you bring all valid driver's license of all persons that will be listed on the title. If you have a trade that you're trading in with us, please make sure that you bring your 10 day payoff as well as your title and all persons who will be listed on the title of that trade. Um, arrive 30 minutes early before your appointment time so we can properly inspect your unit and also make sure that you have the fridge on and running prior to arrival. If you have any questions, please feel free to give us a call at 810-686-0710. Thanks so much, have a great day. Hello, this is Mike with Trade Winds RV Center, here to congratulate you on your purchase of your Catalina Legacy 323 Bunkhouse DSCK. You guys picked a really cool unit. I'm here to walk you around it, show you how to use a few things, get the best out of your camping experience. Let's start by talking about arriving at the campsite. A couple of things I want you to take into consideration. Of course, your awning here, how far that's going to need to come out, and your outdoor kitchen at the rear there. Leave room for your campsite. Now on your off camp side, I want you to think about your slides. Make sure you have plenty of room for these slides to come out unhindered, not touched by anything, and preferably nothing hanging over top of them. I also want you to think about where your water and electricity hookups are. Yours are back here behind the rear tires on your off camp or your driver's side. Your city water connect and your power is gonna be right back here between your slides. So park accordingly so that you can better utilize the facilities. After you've arrived, you'll unhook your hitch. Your hitch man will go over the hitch work with you. First thing you're going to do is level your unit. Now you do have a docking light, for should you arrive at night, and a power tongue jack. Simply raise or lower it until your unit's level. Do recommend putting a level inside your door there, or possibly getting the stick on and putting it on the side of your unit all the way toward the back, maybe on your off camp side, um, right in the middle so that you can know when your unit's level. Once your unit is level, Next thing we're going to do is stabilize our unit. Now on each corner of your unit, you do have stabilizing jack. And in your storage are these three quarter inch hand cranks. Now remember, these are stabilizing jacks, not leveling jacks. You're only going to want to bring these down until they're taut with the ground. You're not going to want to lift the unit at all. You can get a impact driver or a drill gun to run this down in a matter of seconds. The only thing I recommend is that when you get to the bottom with the drill gun, just be careful because you don't want to lift the unit again. I do recommend jack pads. Jack pads are going to protect the feet of your stabilizing jacks from dirt, debris, hot black top, and it'll better distribute the weight. So once you've ran these all down taunt, remember just, just to stabilize the unit. All four corners. Get it all stable. We're going to go ahead and hook up our water and electricity. Coming back here between your slides. Here's your 30 amp power cord. The way these go on now is they go in and twist, and then you tighten down your black washer. At the end of your 30 amp, should you need to plug into 110, there's a 30 to 110 amperage reducer. Got our power hooked up, now we're gonna hook the water up. Just below your power is your city water connection. First and foremost, you're gonna hook up a water pressure regulator. This water pressure regulator is gonna reduce the water pressure to 40 to 50 PSI, protecting the lines in your unit. You always wanna use this whenever putting fluid into your unit because you don't know what the park's water pressure is set at. So once you have your city water connect plugged in and your hose hooked up, don't turn it on yet. We're gonna find your hot water heater. So over on your campsite, just to the left of your entry doorway, is your hot water heater. All we're gonna do at this point is make sure our plug is back in. Return your drain plug. I believe that's an inch and an eighth. Once your plug's back in, you can go ahead and turn your hose on. Now once your hose is ran for a little while, 
You're going to pull on this pressure release valve. It's going to release air, 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 and then a steady flow of water is going to come out of there. Once it does, you know that your hot water heater is all set up and can be lit from indoors. Now there is an on-off switch down here next to the electric element. Only use this when hooked up to 110. You don't have to turn it on from here when hooked up to uh, 30 amp service. Now should you be camping in, you don't have city water, you're using potable water. Over on your campsite as well is your potable water tank. Simply fill this, again, burp your hot water heater of any uh, air that's in the lines. Just to remember, when you're using fresh water or potable water, this is when you're going to want to turn on your water pump. Don't turn on your water pump when using city water, it's unnecessary. So I've got our water and electricity hooked up, I'm going to walk you around the unit, show you a few other things outside. Just below your potable water is your black tank flush. We'll use that when dumping our tanks. And you do have a little blue fresh water drain back there to dump when leaving as well. Coming toward the front of your unit. This is a furnace heat release, so if you're running your furnace, steer clear of this, it'll get rather warm. Your hot water heater. You do have a 110 and cable hook up out here, so you want to put a TV outside. Your outdoor speakers. That is a vent for your microwave hood vent. Your solid steps, we'll talk about those when closing up. Your big pass-through storage. On the front of your unit, I also want to recommend that you check your battery posts. Make sure your battery posts are well connected. Remember, your tongue jack will run off power, but for some reason, if you lose power, you do have a manual override right there. On your propane tanks, you do have a regulator. Simply point this toward the tank that you wish to be using. And you'll see when I open up the tank how it turned green. When that tank empties, that'll turn red. You can know you can switch over to the other side. You also have a battery disconnect out here. It's going to come important later when I talk about uh, your carbon monoxide detector. You want to have this on or off whenever you're camping. Battery disconnect to the green means your disconnect is on, which means your battery is off. It's a little confusing, but make sure you use this whenever you're going to be leaving for the day. Your pass-through storage again. Your cable and satellite connection is toward the front of the unit. Going around your slide, I do want to mention also in your little area here, you do have an outdoor shower. Another low point drain. And here's where you dump your sewage. You have an extra gray and a black and gray here. Around the back of the unit, you do have a accessory rack, spare tire with a cover. This unit is prepped for a Furion backup camera. Should you decide to purchase one from our store, it's an electronic device that sets on your dash, allowing you to have a backup camera on your unit. And your outdoor kitchen. This grill here, so to press down on both of these to bring it forward. Same thing to close them, press down, push forward. Do you have another 110 out here? Bottle opener, your outdoor fridge, leash link, another set of steps. Going back to the bunk room here. That about covers everything on the outside. Let's go take a look inside your unit. First and foremost, I want you and everyone to know that's camping with you where the fire extinguisher is in case of emergency. Fire extinguisher will always be right by your entry doorway. As you come in your entry doorway, coming up the wall here, you have a control panel. We'll start at the top. This is where you check your tanks, your battery, your new battery, both your black and gray tanks. Here's where you control, bring your slides in and out. One thing I want to, I already had them ran out, but one thing I want to do is run them out real quick just to show you something. So the one in the living room, I'm going to run out, once you hear this. That noise is okay to hear, it's just the slide mechanism setting itself. 
it's okay to hear that for a couple seconds nothing is breaking or grinding off also up here you have your awning your exterior lighting your interior lighting there's where you turn on your water pump if using potable water and there's where you turn on your hot water heater from inside running your awning out real quick just to show you how far to run this out now I'm going to want to run it until this flap falls down to 90 degrees right there. When you see the back of your roll bar, you know you're down far enough. Bring it back in. 110 here at the doorway, a couple USB ports. On the floor here is your 12 volt carbon monoxide detector. The reason I mentioned it's 12 volt, it's always running off your battery. So if you're going to be gone for the day, and you don't want your battery run down, use your battery disconnect out there, otherwise this will run your battery down. Your Connex Smart TV. These are super cool, we just got them in new. Just started to receive them. Everything is on your television. From your stereo to Bluetooth. Here's where you can go through everything. TV, Kubota, HDMI, Bluetooth, FM radio. Once the FM radio is up, you can ch change your channels and your volume from here. See, is it effect in Louisiana where resident... Down below, a fireplace. They're not just for looks anymore. Yeah, I can make it pretty by going through all the different colors. But the biggest thing with these now is the heat. These will crank out some good heat. So if you're somewhere plugged in and you don't want to waste your gas, go ahead and in the mornings or evening when it's a little cool, crank this up and this will warm it up in here rather quickly. All your controls for that are over here. There is a remote. You have a multicolored uh, awning light. There's a remote for that. There's your television remote. There's a 12 volt charger in here as well. Pretty sure you've seen, but I'm going to show you real quickly how your sofa just jack max down into a bed. Just that quickly you have a bed. We'll bring it back up. Bring your arm down, and you're back to a sofa. Coming over to your stove. Self explanatory microwave. Do you have a light and a fan for your stove? This glass top makes an excellent backsplash. Simply set this to light, hit your spark, and there's your flames. You do have a panel light for this as well. This switch to the right of your stove, that is for your fridge. You have an electric fridge in these now. That's where you turn your fridge on. Come to the back of the unit. Underneath your little pantry here on the floor next to the 110 is your access panel to your fuse box and breaker box. Looks like you've got a ton of 15s in there. I highly recommend having a handful of those with you when you go camping. We have those in our store as well. On the wall in the hallway here, there's our thermostat. It'll handle your heat, fan, and cool. Just set it at the desired temperature. Coming into your bathroom, Main thing I want to mention in here is where your GFCI reset is and that you have plumbing to maintain. Keep an eye up underneath your sink or your yeah, your sink here and behind your toilet. Keep an eye on your plumbing as you, just like you would your home. Come back to the bunk area here. Everything's pretty self-explanatory back here. You do have USB ports, your one-touch lighting, your locked up top sofa. These uh, gaming chairs can lay out onto the floor into a huge bed. You do have a hookup here for cable and TV in that area there. You do have just a hand crank open vent back here, which is pre-wired for a uh, AC unit, if you ever decide to put an AC unit back here. Coming out and down through our hallway, there's your AC unit. A little quick note. 
on your quick dump. So you arrive at a campsite in the summer, it's 95 degrees out, it's smoking hot, you want to cool your trailer down quickly. Open your quick dump when you turn on your AC. What that's going to do is going to allow the, the AC unit to cool the cool air so that when you do close this, it's going to blast cold air all the way through the unit. There is your smoke alarm. Coming back into the bedroom here. Anything I want to mention back here is you do have your 110s and prep for a television back here as well. There's your lighting. USB ports, that's your emergency exit window. About covers everything on the outside. Let's act like we're leaving the campsite and go to the out go to the outside. So first thing you want to do is you're going to go through the unit and shut off all the lights so everything's not running off your battery. You're going to come back here and you're going to make sure nothing's going to impede this slide from coming in and that your bed is locked up or down. Close all doors. Make sure nothing is in this area here to impede these slides from coming in. Then you're simply going to go slide in. That's going to be our front one. See this slides in really quickly. Again, make sure that cabinet door is closed. Make sure the cabinet doors are closed on that pantry down there as well. You just don't want anything to stop this from coming in and breaking anything. Again, that noise is okay. I'm gonna bring in the back slide. And then we're gonna head outside and leave the campsite. All right, so let's start by talking about closed up your steps. You wanna make sure your door is all the way open. Lift up the steps. Make sure you've already swept them. Bring this up softly. Turn your handle to the right or left, and that'll lock that in. Close your exterior door. Lift and turn your of your door coming open. Now we're going to drain some things. Pull your lines, bleed your lines, pull your hot water, drain that. This is all okay to do at the campsite. It's all clean waters. Come around, you have your fresh water drain. If you're using fresh water, go right back there and empty that drain. around your off camp side. Got a low point drain here as well. Underneath your power cord, take the caps off them and drain them. Now we can head up to the dump station. Once we're at the dump station, because you do have two, I recommend you get a Y. Otherwise, hook up your sewage hose and pull your black handle. Once your black handle has been going for a while and it sounds like it's no longer draining, we're going to go around to your campsite to your black tank flush. Again, we're going to hook up our water pressure regulator and hook up your black tank flush. What that's going to do is that's going to spray your black tank out. So leave your handle pulled, turn this hose on, run it for about five minutes. The guy behind you can wait. It's only five minutes. If you wanted to leave earlier, you should have. So. After you ran that for five minutes, go ahead and un unhook your water. Go back over and close your black handle. Once you've closed your black handle, go ahead and pull your gray. After that's dumped, it's going to be cleaner waters. You're going to come over here and use your galley. Dump your galley tank. That's going to be your showers, your sinks. That'll clean your sewage hose out. Come to the back of your unit. Open this up and store your sewage hose right there inside your bumper. It's a nice sanitary place to keep it. Again, we thank you for trade winds. Hope you enjoy this trailer for many years to come. Happy camping.